What's going on guys? So today we are working on a 2013 Dodge Dart. Um, a guy from work asked me if I would do the brakes on it and I thought I'd show you guys a little, uh, couple little tricks and tips on it uh, as far as to getting these things done because I do have a couple special bolts. Um, so I'll show you some tricks and tips just in case you don't have those, how to get it done. That way you can get back on the road and go have fun. So we're obviously looking at the front brakes right now. Um, when you're looking at the front brakes you'll see these star bolts. Uh, right here that hold the caliper bracket on. Let's see if we can get that glare out of there. Um, and what you're going to need to get that off is they make a special uh, socket for it. It's like an E, I don't know, 46 or something like that. Um, but what you can use, just in case you don't have those sockets, because I know most people don't, um, is a 5 8 um, 12 point wrench or socket you could use a socket as well um, what it does though is it grabs that and you can still crack them loose without stripping it out so uh, definitely can use that that's one thing I would recommend if you don't have that special socket for it just use a 5 8 or I think it's a 16 millimeter wrench make sure it's 12 point um, and you can uh, crack those nuts loose right there um, the other thing too is when you're taking these uh, doing these brakes if you're replacing the rotor or taking the rotor off, which you should at least get it, uh, you know, get the uh, rotors turned or even if you're going to replace them, there's a bolt that holds this on. Crack that bolt loose before you take the brakes off. That way uh, you can have some resistance in cracking that loose. Otherwise, it's going to spin freely and you might have some trouble taking that off. Now, once we get uh, this front rotor bolt loose, uh, we'll be taking off the caliper itself. There's two. 14 millimeter bolts for that one here and one down here. Uh, we'll take those off, slide the caliper out of the way, then we'll take the bracket off, um, get the rotor switched out as well. Now that rotor bolt, I don't think I told you, but it is just an eight millimeter Allen wrench, or sorry, five millimeter Allen wrench uh, to get that off. Uh, so just to keep it out of the way, I use a wire hanger. Um, I've just made it a couple double hooks. Um, that way, when I take calipers off, I can hang them up out of the way so when I can so I can work without them being there. Next we'll have to take those bracket bolts out. Those are the weird looking ones. Those star bolts. Then once you get the bracket loose, uh, we'll just take out the brake pads. Uh, this one doesn't look too bad, but there was some grinding when I was driving it over here, so it sounded like it was more in the back, but he, the guy asked me to go ahead and do all four corners, so we're doing that today. So we'll pop these out, uh, and this is your chance if you want to replace these little hardware brackets, you can. Uh, they look pretty good to me, so we're going to reuse them, um, but most of the time when you get new brake pads, you'll uh, get new brackets as well. That's the time to uh, uh, replace your bracket hardware. Next we'll go ahead and clean this off just to make sure it's clean uh, from any uh, road grime, salt. Um, this one does have quite a bit of debris on it right in here. You can see it right there. So. Now we got our new rotor. Uh, we did clean it off with some brake cleaner. Make sure you clean both sides of the uh, disc area. And we'll slide this back on. Getting our bolt ready for it. And you'll see on here there's one smaller hole on the front. Um, and that's where that's going to mount. So you just got to line up. If you look at this rotor, back you out here so you can see. If you look at this rotor, there's two different size holes, and this is the one that obviously goes in the smaller hole. You just line that up with the one on the uh, on the face here on the hub, and mount it. That is easier said than done. Balancing it and getting it started, but it can be done. Now that doesn't have to be very tight. That's just to get it started. The uh, lug bolts 
these guys you held your wheel on with that's what's really going to hold this thing on so don't go crazy on that uh, one it's a really soft metal so you'll strip it out uh, two if it seizes up and you got to get this rotor off later again that's going to be a pain in the butt so just tighten it on so it holds it in place uh, but these are what actually hold the wheel and everything on we got our new uh, brake pads this particular one doesn't come with the wear tab on it comes in the hardware kit um, we got to make sure we put those on so this snaps on um, that tab sticks out a little bit so as your brake pads wear down that tab will actually start rubbing on the rotor giving you a kind of awful noise uh, which lets you know it's time to replace those brakes so what I do is again anti-seize just on the ends of the brake pads uh, where that bracket that hardware kind of touches the brake pad itself uh, I put it there that way it keeps sliding and moving freely uh, again you can use a grease for this but you have to be real careful not to get it on the surface that actually touches the rotor uh, itself also you can put it on the back here this actually comes with a silencer pad but if you want to help with that metal on metal squealing noise uh, you can put it on the back here as well I'm not going to because it comes with the pad already on it alright now they're both in what we're gonna do next is just take our uh, old brake pad set it on the caliper which I'll try to bring this over to where you can see but anyways we'll take our old brake pad set it on the caliper take our little press here compress this back this piston back down now some of this info is going to be used on most any brakes but um, it just so happens we work, we're working on a Dodge Dart today but now we got that piston nice and flush back with the housing it's all the way back in we can unhook it flip it around and slide it on then all we have to do is put our bolts back in to hold that alright we're all done here let's go to the back uh, and show you a couple things I found over there now unlike the front one the rear ones uh, a little bit more pain in the butt just because you can't turn it to get to everything um, also it's got the brake parking brake cable uh, on here which just makes it a little more difficult to mess with you can take all that off but I don't recommend it you can definitely get it done without doing all that uh, all that work um, the only thing we have to mess with again is taking that front uh, uh, rotor bolt uh, to take that loose real quick so we'll crack that loose um, and then I'll show you some clips and springs you gotta fiddle with back here which aren't difficult don't worry but they do make it a little more complicated than the fronts just because of those the backs different than the front because of the clearance issues here uh, it's just easier to grab a 14 millimeter wrench get those started loose alright now that we have these uh, both those uh, caliper bolts out this comes off just gotta kind of fight with it a little bit just because the rear ones um, that parking brake is kind of a pain in how it sits now unlike the front one because this has the cable on it it kinda can just hang here uh, and it's not gonna give you any fits but when you look try to zoom in and show you here there's two little clips one on the top there's also one down here right there um, those just pop right off um, you can actually grab pliers sometimes you can even pop them out with your hand but when you go to put these back on what these do is these force it the brake pads to sit off of the rotor and that's fine that's that's a good thing because it doesn't wear all the time the problem is is when it does that you have to then hold these brake pads together and then figure out how to get this uh, caliper back in place without them springing out and I'll show you here in a minute when I get those replaced um, how big of a pain that can actually be
Now the new one should come with these. Um, just be careful, just in case uh, the your brake pads are don't come with them. Uh, make sure you save them, just in case you need to reuse one. Also, you don't want to lose it on the garage floor and run over it later. On the back side, um, this has, takes an eight millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, there's two bolts back here, uh, and that's what holds this bracket on. So. Uh, I would put you back there, but you'd be in my way, so I'm just going to take them off, and you can trust me on that. Now, this, I believe, was my problem one, um, so we're going to have to tap that back off because um, it's kind of grabbing it pretty good. This is the wheel that sounded like most of the noise was coming from, which just even looking at this rotor, I can kind of tell, but we're just going to... really nothing too crazy but um, definitely was grinding a little bit you could hear it when you would break so now we got to do the same thing like we did on the front to the back and that is get a mallet in here um, and smack this off you can see again the grime and corrosion right there um, and that's what that, that uh, anti seize sometimes will cut down on. So putting that all around there when you put the new one on helps. So these things are still stuck in here. But just get a hammer and tap them out. Get them out of there. Now you can see on this pad where it was wearing really, really bad. Uh, around this edge so definitely needed replaced because it was not sitting right so we'll slide them in there when we put the new ones in we'll make sure everything moves nice and easy uh, just to know we're not fighting against anything that's and that's typically a time to it's a good time to check if you've got weird uh, wear patterns on those is to check these slide pins make sure they move nice and easy if they don't you can pull them out grease those up um, because if these aren't working, uh, it's going to make your brakes wear weird, uh, which will cause more grinding, more noise, and then you're going to end up having to replace them faster than you would normally. So it's a good idea to check those while you have them off. The biggest difference you'll notice now is the piston on this caliper is not just an open hole. It's actually got two little divots in here. Um, there's an actual tool that locks in there and twists that piston back in because this one having the parking brake actually has to spin back in. What I've used um, successfully is needle nose pliers. Um, now depending on what kind it is, this may or may not work, but this particular car it does. And you get it in there and then you just kind of push and twist. Now, you got to push and twist all at the same time and get it pushed, pushed back in there. So I'm going to move you, set you guys over here while I do that. But that's what you're doing is you're locking these uh, pliers in between the two grooves, pushing and twisting and recompressing that piston. Now what I do after I get it all done is I check to make sure that the piston face is behind this lip right here. Uh, once I know it's back far enough, uh, I can slide the new pads on and we're good to go. Now on these Dodge darts, I'm going to try to show you there's a hole here. See that little pinhole right on the back there? You got one on the back of each of those. Those clips we took off earlier, that's the holes they go in. And when you put them in, those springs try to separate the pads, so, and they're surprisingly strong because the old ones, they didn't move at all. First time I did this, I wrestled with it for about five and a half minutes. Hopefully this time I can do it quicker. But you got to lift this guy out of the way because he wants to be in the way. Set it in one hole. Set it in the other. And you gotta hold it. If 
you don't hold it, it's going to just spring apart and it'll pop out of the bracket. Now, the U-shape part, that goes towards the middle. So it points, the bottom one points up, the top one points down. That's pretty, pretty simple to figure out, but I just thought I'd tell you. Now, you got to hold it, slide this guy over, and get it on without them popping out. That is, hands down, the trickiest part. There you go. Like that. Basically, you just hold it with one hand and try to keep it as out of, out of the way as much as possible, and then just guide, glide that over, and or guide it over and slap it on. And then there is a little channel that has to hit, so you got to maybe adjust that up and down to get that slide in place. But once you do that, throw your uh, bolts back in for that. There you have it guys, um, so those are a couple tricks and tips I found uh, to be useful when doing the brakes on these Dodge darts. Like I said, uh, the back is a little bit more difficult just because of those little clips and tabs that you got to hold. Um, but outside of that, not too difficult. I did this whole job with, you know, taking my time um, probably in just a, an hour and a half or so, um, two hours, and I was pretty, pretty lazy that whole time. So. Um, not anything that'll take all day to do, um, but there you have it. Um, do me a favor, just uh, leave a comment below if this video was helpful. Um, if you want to see, see me do anything else to any other car, I'm more than happy to give it a shot. Uh, but I'm Bo Money. See you guys later. Like, subscribe, comment. Uh, see you guys next time. This is the before. Hello. It's dark in here, huh? In a little while, we'll get these new lights up and uh, see the after. Hopefully, uh, we can, you know, get working in here again. It's all clean. It is all clean. It's all clean and it's all bright. Look how bright it is in here now. See, they're all wired up. Wired. Now we can do the, uh, the, the new parts we got, huh? We're going to go get Sissy in a minute. Are you ready to start doing videos on the car again? Yeah. Yeah, me too. It'll be fun, right? Yeah. My hands are Your hands are cold? Yeah. Alright, let's go get Sissy off the bus. Yay! I'm So now with all these lights up, uh, we can get back to doing fun stuff. We're going to start doing stuff to the car here uh, in the next couple of days. <laughs> we got some door speakers. <laughs> And we got some uh, rally armor flaps, so let's get back to that stuff. Uh, have fun, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Learn something.